Hello and welcome to Mrs. Patnell's Literacy Lessons. This is lesson number 24, so we're back from half term. Uh, if you're in my class, you did a little lesson at home yesterday, which involved Pancakes, Pancakes by um, Eric Carle. Um, and in class, we had the story and then we looked at the bossy instructions that Jack's mum gave to Jack. And then everyone gave me those bossy instructions and I had to make a pancake with all of the right steps in the right order. So hopefully you did that at home with an adult and you bossed your adult and told them exactly how to make a pancake and hopefully you got some nice pancakes. If you were all pancakes out from pancake day, I completely understand. So today we're moving on. So sticking with the pancake theme, we are now looking at Mr. Wolf's pancakes today. Okay, so a new story, and this is the one we'll be following for the rest of the week, so for the, for the next few lessons. So I'm going to come on over to the camera and read to you Mr. Wolf's pancakes. Here he is. You might have had this story before. It's a nice, well-known story, this one. Okay, Mr. Wolf's pancakes. One day, Mr. Wolf was feeling hungry. Here he is, sitting in his chair, and he's dreaming of pancakes. He fancied some pancakes. Yum, yum, he said, licking his lips at the thought of a big pile of fresh, delicious pancakes. I don't blame him. That is quite a pile as well. I don't think I've ever had a pile that big of pancakes. I'm just going to tilt this ever so slightly. Okay, let's try that. Mr. Wharf had never made pancakes before. Oh. So he took his big recipe book down off the shelf and looked inside. So there, his massive recipe book. It says, Wharf it down recipe book. So he's just grabbing that off the shelf. If I just take this opportunity to say, isn't he dressed rather dapper with his spotty shirt and his yellow trousers? Hmm. But wolves can't read very well, and Mr. Wolf had trouble making sense of it. So he went to get some help from his neighbours. I wonder who lives near to Mr. Wolf. Ah, this is his first neighbour just here. He called on Chicken Lickin. I heard that name before. Who lived nearby. Please, can you help me read this? He asked. No said Chicken Licking, slamming the door in Mr. Wolf's face. Bang! Oh, poor old wolf. I'm beginning to feel a bit sorry for the wolf, actually, now, which is unusual in one of these stories. Oh, dear, sighed Mr. Wolf. He sat down slowly to read the book and worked out what he needed all by himself. So he says he's not the best reader, but he's managed to get his Wharf It Down recipe book. And as he's reading, he's thinking what he needs. So he needs flour, he needs eggs, and he needs uh, milk to make his pancakes. So he's managed to work it out all by himself. Well done, Mr. Wharf. Mr. Wharf looked in his cupboards for the ingredients, but he couldn't find anything he needed. So he's got uh, wharf chips, huff puffs, tomato sauce, pot of jam, but not the ingredients for his pancakes. I'll go to the shop, he decided, and he settled down to write a list. But wolves aren't very good at writing. So Mr. Wolf called on Wee Willy Winky. Here he is, his other neighbour. Here he is. You're very clever, said Mr. Wolf. Can you help me write my shopping list, please? No, said Wee Willy Winky. Go away! And he slammed the door. Bang! There's no need to be like that, said Mr. Wolf, quietly. Oh, he's getting a bit sad now. I'm not surprised. That's two doors that have been slammed in his face. Mr. Wolf sat down and tried very hard with his writing. Well done, Mr. Wolf. Until he had made his own shopping list all by himself. And I don't know if you can see there, but he's wrote milk, eggs and flour. Well done, Mr. Wolf. Now he needed to count his money to make sure he had enough to buy his ingredients. But wolves aren't very good at counting. So he went to the gingerbread man for some help. 
Here he is, having a chat to Gingy. Can you help me count my money, please? He asked politely. No, I'm too busy to bother with you, said the gingerbread man, slamming his door. Bang! Oh, that's door number three that he slammed, had slammed in his face. Poor old Mr. Wolf. So poor Mr. Wolf had to sit down and count his money. It took him a long time and he had to check it three times to make sure it was right. But he did it all by himself. Mr. Wolf needed a basket to carry his shopping. So he called on his neighbour, Little Red Riding Hood. Please may I borrow your basket? He asked very nicely. I'm not lending my basket to you, said Little Red Riding Hood. Now clear off. So Mr. Wolf set off to the shop without a basket. I'll manage, he said. Oh, I'm feeling sorry for Mr. Wolf. Mr. Wolf went to the shop. Here he is, he's got himself to town all by himself, his shopping list in his hand, and he's heading in to Old Mother Hubbard's general store. Ooh. Here she is, there's Old Mother Hubbard. He looked at his list, remembered what he needed, counted out his money, and carried the eggs, milk and flour home, all by himself. Look what he's got tucked under his chin. The eggs, they look a bit dodgy there, don't they? Like they're going to fall off and crack. Well done, Mr. Wolf, though. All that without a basket. Now it was time to make the pancakes. But wolves aren't very good at cooking. So Mr. Wolf called on the three little pigs. And here they are. One, two, and three. In their houses of straw, sticks, and bricks. Please can you help me cook my pancakes? I'll share them with you, he said kindly. No chance, chorused the pigs, slamming their doors. Bang, bang, bang. Mr. Wolf felt sad because nobody wanted to help him. Oh no, look, he's got his hanky out now and he's patting his tears. Oh, I feel super sorry for Mr. Wolf now. Mr. Wolf went home and started to make the pancakes all by himself. Soon, there was a huge pile of delicious pancakes on the table, all ready for eating. Oh, yum, yum. Well done, Mr. Wolf. I wonder if yours looked like that yesterday. I think it's flipping one here as well, look. Now, as Mr. Wolf had been making his pancakes, a lovely smell had drifted out of the kitchen. All his neighbours could smell it. And it made them feel very hungry. They wanted some pancakes too. They decided to try their luck. If you have to look closely, that little red riding hood is there, marching away across the bridge. We have got the three little pigs following the smell. We've got gingerbread man here. We've got wee willy winky. Have we got chicken licking? Where is she? Hmm, she must be. Oh, here she is, just coming out of her house. There's chicken licking. She's trying to get a pancake as well. Do they deserve a pancake? Hmm. So they knocked on Mr. Wolf's door. Give us some of your pancakes, said the rotten lot. Why should I give any to you, said Mr. Wolf. Not one of you would help me. We'll help you eat them then, replied Mr. Wolf's neighbours nastily. Anyway, we're not going away until you give us some. <gasps> Aren't they nice? Uh, Mr. Wolf thought very hard for a moment. There was only one decent thing that he could do. Oh, very well then, he sighed. You had better come in. Mr. Wolf opened the door and whoosh! His greedy neighbours rudely pushed him aside and dashed down the hall. Look at them all trying to get those pancakes. Mr. Wolf shook his head, shrugged his shoulders, followed them into the kitchen. And when they were all in, ooh, what 
do you think is going to happen? Have a little think. They're all in the house. The pancakes are there on the table. Mr. Wolf has let them in. What's going to happen? Pause the video if you want and tell the adult in the room what you think, what you predict is going to happen. Let's have a look, shall we? <gasps> Mr. Wolf gobbled them up. Snippety, snappity. That was the end of his unhelpful neighbours. <laughs> just patting his mouth clean and then with his bulging tummy not quite full Mr Wolf sat down to eat his pile of pancakes and he did it all by himself now if you look closely you can see on the table we got a little red scarf a bow tie a feather from chicken licking wee willy winky's cap Red Riding Hood's cloak. These must belong to the free pigs then, I think. There's his other tie. <gasps> so he's eaten them all up and just left their clothes on the side. Hang on, last page. Well, he did it all by himself because there was nobody else around. That's because he's eaten them all. Look at his big, his big old belly there full of all the different people he's eaten, followed by a big pile of steaming pancakes. <gasps> Okay, so thinking about this, why do you think, and if you think about other stories you might already know, why do you think Chicken Lickin and um, Wee Wee Winky and uh, the Gingerbread Man and the Three Pigs, why do you think they were all quite rude to Mr Wolf? Why did they bang the door in his face and say, no, we're not going to help you? What do we know about other stories about these characters as to why these people might have been a bit mean to Mr. Wolf? So I'm thinking that probably Mr. Wolf generally in other books is quite mean, isn't he? So he comes along and tries to eat Red Riding Hood's grandmother. He blows down the houses of the three little pigs. He, uh, I don't know if he has any trouble with Wee Willy Winky, actually, because that's just a little song, isn't it, Wee Willy Winky? So, uh, yeah, I don't know why he's so grumpy with him, to be honest. Um, but maybe Chicken Licking, she thought she was going to get eaten. So maybe that's why they shut the door in his face. We just think you're going to eat us. Well, actually, in the end, they were right, weren't they? Because he did eat them in the end. So maybe that's why they were so mean. But I still think when he needed their help to write the shopping list and to uh, read what ingredients he needed and count his money, that it would be so much nicer, wouldn't it, to just say yes and to help somebody out, okay? So even if it's someone who's not really your best friend or you've not, uh, you've not been getting on so well, it's still nice, isn't it, to forget all that and to help people out. It's much nicer to say, yes, yes, I can help you. What can I do to help you? Is a much nicer way of doing things, to be honest with you. Now, what we're going to do is uh, have a little think to ourselves about a time when we might have been quite helpful to somebody else. It could have been at home. Uh, you could have helped mum, dad, or one of your brothers or sisters. Or it could have been when you were at school. Okay, so who might have you have helped out at school? It can be anything. It can be that you held a door open while someone was getting something out of the cloakroom. It could be you kept somebody company and chatted to them through the toilet door when they were going to the toilet. It could be that uh, they couldn't get their lid off of something, so you helped them or you helped them undo their pet lunch. It could be any little things. It could be you helped um, at home, you helped dad to cook the dinner or do some of the hoovering, something like that. So have a little think now and pause the video and have a chat with your adult at home about something you know you did that was very helpful. So you weren't like Wee Willy Winky and you weren't like the Three Little Pigs. This time you were helpful. So have a little think and have a chat to your adult about that. Okay, now we're going to come back together. I hope you did some amazing helpful things. Remember, even the littlest things are really helpful and are really nice to do. So we are thinking about, over the course of this week, about having a little party. Now, I know that if you're at home, it's a little harder to, um, to, to sort of have a party, but you can have parties with just two people, okay? You don't need huge amounts of numbers of people to have a good time at a party. 
So our work this week is leading up to planning a party and thinking about things like invitations, okay, and making a plan about what we need to do. So it'd be really great if you could have one as well at home. We're planning to have it on a Friday, so we're working up to it to the end of the week. And it'd be great if you guys at home could join in on this and have your own party and pop your pictures onto tapestry if you're in my class so I can see how your party went. Now, in order to plan a party, I'm just going to nip and get my party plan sheet. Hold on one second. So, here is my party plan sheet, okay? It's really handy to have one of these because it means you won't forget anything vital that you need to have at your party. Now, if you are in my class, I've sent these on Google Classroom so you can have your own party planner sheet at your own house, okay? Now, it has five sections to this. One, two, three, four, and one at the bottom is five. So, things you need to remember when planning a party. Where will the party be? So, you're going to have to think about that. What food and drink will you give your guests? So your guests are the people that are coming. So, if you're planning, you might have your mum to your party. You might have younger or older brothers and sisters to your party. You might have your dad. So, who are your guests? Who's coming? What games will be played? We've got here. That's a very important one. Who will you invite? How will you invite them? Oh, that's a good thing, isn't it? So, who's coming? Who will you invite? And um, also, how will you get them to come? How will they know about it? Now, if you're all at home together, you can probably tell them. But I think it's always nicer to receive something special with the details on. So we'll chat about that in a minute. What else do you need to think about? So any extra bits that you might need to consider when having a great party. OK, so I think that uh, where will the party be? So... For us here, if we're not home learning, we are going to have it at school. But for you guys at home, I'd like to think you're probably going to have it at home, aren't you? Yeah, okay, maybe in the garden if the weather's nice, but probably at home. So you would put on your party plan here, at home. So, put a nice capital app, and then home. So I'll fill that in for you there. Okay, you might need a little help with spelling home because it's a bit of a funny spelling on the end there. So it's going to be at your home. And then the next box says, what food and drink will you give your guests? Oh, so what will you have? Now, I can't fill this in for you and tell you what you want, because I don't know what your favourite party food is. But I'll write it out as if it was me. So I would put in there, I'd probably have, hmm, I'd probably have egg sandwiches. I quite like egg sandwiches. So egg, what does it begin with? Egg, eh? And then it has two g, two g's after it. So egg Sandwiches. What does that begin with? Sandwiches. Us. So egg sandwiches. Now, all good parties do tend to have a little something like chocolate cake or something, don't they? So I might go for, yeah, let's go, go chocolate cake. Yeah. Or maybe cookies. Should we go with chocolate cookies? Right, so cookies, cookies. What does that begin with? K. And it's a curly one. K. Uh, oh, it's one of those uh sounds with the o uh and the o. Uh. And we did u uh and u uh in our phonics. So cookies. And what else might I have? Sometimes I quite like a bit of fruit in a bowl. So I might put fruit, fruit. So I need a nice at the beginning of my fruit. If you can't hear all the sounds when you're writing your list, okay, pick out the sounds you can hear and write those down. All right. So if you can only hear the f and the t in fruit, then put the f and the t and don't worry too much about the other sounds, but just do the best that you can, the best sounds that you can hear. So I've got egg sandwiches, cookies and fruit for my guests. And then my next box is what games will be played. So what games do you like playing? Now in class, we tend to play games like silly sausages, don't we? So we might have a game of Silly sausages. So both silly and sausages both begin with s. So I've got s i l e sausages. So I'm really trying to think about what sounds I can hear. Silly sausages. Um, what else could we play? What other games do we like playing? Hmm. Sometimes we do uh, pass the parcel, or we do musical statues, or should we go with? 
we do spot the difference in our class, don't we? Where someone leaves the room and we change something about them and they come back and we have to guess. Should we go for spot the difference? So spot, it's a s, then a p, an ot. Spot, tricky word, the. How do we write the? We're tongue poking out, the. So it's t, h, e. Spot the difference. What does difference begin with? It's a d, isn't it? Spot the difference. There we are. So what games will I play? I've got silly sausages and spot the difference. Now, who will you invite and how will you invite them? So who's coming to your party? Now, obviously, I don't know who you're going to invite, but I'm going to think that probably you're going to invite your mum. 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 Mm. Ah. Mm. Mum. Perhaps you might invite dad. Dad. D, a, d. Dad is coming. Perhaps you're going to invite your sister. Let's think about the first syllable. It's sis, s, i, s, sister. Now the er uh sound I'm yet to teach you. I think it's probably next week. So you might need to get a little help with that if you are inviting your sister. Maybe you might invite your brother. Brother with a b. Okay, so we've got mum, dad, sister and brother are on your invite list. How will you invite them? You could go around and tell them, but I think it's a much nicer thing is to send an invitation. If you've ever been invited to a party before and you've been sent an invitation to tell you all the details about the party, it's kind of exciting, isn't it, getting an invitation? So I imagine that mum, dad, sisters and brothers, or whoever you're inviting, would love to get an invitation. So I'm going to write down here, invitations. Now it's a big word, so you will want some help with that from your adults if you are writing invitations. We're going to look at making invitations over the next couple of lessons. Okay, so you don't have to rush off and do those today if you don't want to, because we're going to look at them in the next couple of lessons. Uh, what else do you need to think about for a party? Hmm, I suppose uh, when it's going to be. Now, we're planning in class to have it on Friday, so I'm going to write Friday in there. I'm going to give it a capital letter because all days of the week uh, are names of the days, so they need a capital letter. So Friday, and I think probably we're going to have our party maybe in the afternoon. So I'm going to put, um, let's go for two o'clock in the afternoon. So we've been doing our o'clocks just before half term. So two o'clock when the big hand points to the 12 and the small hour hand points to the tea. So I've finished my plan there, okay? So remember, if you're in my classroom, I've sent you through your own plan on Google Class, so feel free to use that to make your plan on, so you can fill in all the boxes. If you're not in my class, then by all means just use the same suggestions that I've used on my list here, and make your own plan on a piece of paper at home for your party. I think we all need a party, don't we? Particularly at the moment, because we've been at home for a long time, and it'd be a good idea to have a good old party, and maybe a bit of a dance, and some fun and games. So I suggest it's a real fab idea to throw yourself a party. Right then, I'll see you again tomorrow when we look at writing invitations and things like that to build up to our party. Take care, see you then, bye bye.